We're uh, uh, very lucky to have Nate Bosch here. Uh, Nate is a professor at, at Grace College and has done a lot of research in Lake Erie, a big research project, and, and now he's working uh, in Kosciuszko County to uh, helping us gather information and make better decisions. That are lakes. So we have a food chain in the lake. So if we were to walk down the path out here to the lakefront property that WACF has on site here, we would look in that lake and we'd find certain organisms, okay, that make up the food. Man, human, humans are eating those big fish, so that's the top. What about those bottom two levels? Any ideas? Plants. Plants, yes, that's the second to the bottom. And what feeds the plants? Nutrients. 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 So this is the food chain. So obviously this is happening out in Lake Wawasee right now. We've got plants growing and zooplankton are eating those and it's working its way up the food chain. People are fishing probably as we speak out there. Does this happen in the winter time? It slows down. It slows down, yes. But it still is happening, okay? So these three levels up here all need to breathe oxygen, okay? and the plants produce oxygen. Even <coughs> when the lake is sealed off with ice, there's still oxygen being produced for these things to breathe because the plants are still able to do photosynthesis and, and create a particularly harsh winter this past winter. So there was ice for a long time. And what was on top of the ice for most of the time? Snow, yeah. snow right? So that <coughs> snow then did not allow <coughs> sunlight to get down under the ice like normally would be the case. So on a lot of our local lakes, we had fish kills as a result because the oxygen ran out. Uh, some lakes more than others. I don't think we had a big fish kill on Lake Wawasee, at least I, I didn't see anything or, or hear of anything. But some lakes, uh, some smaller lakes and maybe some private lakes on people's property um, lost all their fish. Talking about how lakes seasonally mix. In the summertime here, um, this is what's going on now where we've got this bottom layer here which is cold water, it's really dense, it sinks down to the bottom, it just sits there, okay? And then we've got this warm water layer up top. Sometimes if you dive really deep down, uh, you can start to feel that cold water as you swim down deeper. Maybe you feel it on your toes or something if you do a pencil dive. Um, even with the wind blowing across here, and this starts to mix, and there's a lot of mixing. I mean, that, that's why Lake Wawasee is so good for sailing, because we get a lot of wind across there. Um, it still is not going to mix down with this water. Throughout the entire summer, you've got oxygen being used up, because you've got all decomposing stuff down here, and those bacteria that are decomposing the old plants and the old algae from the year before, they're all using their breathing oxygen, so they're using oxygen up, okay? And so that's using oxygen in the bottom. So then some of our fish species that love cold water, they're out of luck and by the end of the summer because there's no oxygen in the cold water anymore. So that's why we don't have a lot of those really cool fish like ciscos and um, lake sturgeon uh, like we maybe once did because they can't go in that cool water refuge anymore because there's no oxygen there anymore because we've had too many nutrients coming into the lakes which have caused too much algae and plant growth. We start to cool down this upper layer of water, so then it starts to mix from top to bottom. And then we do get oxygen all the way down to the bottom of the lake. And then in winter time, when we have <coughs> ice, we can't really have wind blowing across the surface of the water, so it doesn't mix. It just sits there sort of stagnant in the winter. And then in the spring, then, it's, then it starts to mix again in the spring. So with this past winter that we had, with it being a really harsh winter, um, it also had an influence on the weeds. And um, because of that blanket of snow on top of the ice, a lot of those weeds, those plants that are rooted there, they couldn't get the sunlight, so more of them died out over the winter than normally would have. And so it's going to take a bit more for them to sort of come back this next year. Uh, also, when you have ice, sort of up against the shore, that ice isn't, isn't stable. And so as it's moving and shifting, it's sort of scouring the bottom of the lake. It's kind of uprooting plants, you know, because that, and, and sometimes it has issues with seawalls too, and people's property, but it's sort of moving around and it can uproot plants and, and cause disturbance for them. So if I had to guess, I would guess um, that we would maybe not have as many weeds as we typically do this year uh, due to the harsh winter that we had. Um, but what's the other thing that 
uses nutrients in the lake. It's not just the rooted weeds. I'm working the previous slide. No. Algae. Algae, yeah. algae, right? Yeah. So the algae and the plants are always competing for those nutrients, right? And when the plants <coughs> are in as high of supply, there's more nutrients for what? Yeah. For the algae, right? So they're, they're sort of in competition. And often that, that's what happens when, when an environmental consultant comes in and they spray all the weeds in a lake. What you'll have happen in the next couple of weeks is a big algae bloom where the algae will just take off because now all those weeds are dead, their competitor is gone, so now they can just take off and grow really prolifer prolifically um, in, in the lake. And so, so that could be, that's something that we'll have to watch for here in Lake Wawasee and uh, Syracuse and see what happens with that as we go through.